Hi guys, it's Tara here, the Crafty Sugar Addict. Today I am sharing another mail art tutorial with you for Viva Las Vegas stamps. So I'm going to start with the envelope dimensions on this one are a little different than what I typically do. This is a very large envelope you can see here. It is five and a, five and three fourths by eight and three fourths, so it's very large. But I wanted something a little bigger so that we didn't lose the focus, and I wanted some of these. I mean, these stamps would fit on a small envelope. Let's see if I have one here. Um, but then you have to have a smaller address block. And this is a very large address block. This is the size of an ATC, so 2.5 by 3.5. So that's just something maybe you want to use a bigger card or you just want to have more detail. You could go wild with this. So let's get started. And today I changed some stuff around on my desk and put a different stand so my tripod doesn't fit quite right and I'm working at a really strange angle. If you hear that noise in the background, I'm sorry, that's my fur babies here. Okay, so I'm going to start by stamping, of course, our focal image, the Santa Claus. He's in the front. I'm going to stamp him and then mask him off. So let me get my repositionable tape because I need to clean my stamp. It's gotten too much use. So it is clean mounted, but it needs cleaned. So for now, we'll reposition it. We'll tape it. So I've got this. I'm going to use archival ink by Ranger today. Like I said, you can use any black ink you want. If you have Memento, because I am coloring this with alcohol-based markers, I recommend Memento. But it really doesn't make that big of a difference. It's not going to hurt anything. So it'll just make your image disperse a little bit. Now I want to have a big tree here, so I'm going to go in towards the center a little bit. And let's say right about there. Give it some good pressure. All right, and that stamped very nicely. Let's see if I can bring this in a little bit for more for you guys. And it's a big envelope, it takes up a lot of the room. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and mask that off. Now, because I do keep my masks, I've already got a mask of him. So I'm just gonna take that. It's already got some repositionable tape on the back. And just line that up on top of the image. Now that will protect this so that we can do our Christmas tree behind it, or our pine tree. And the links to all of these stamps will be located on the blog. And I will have a direct link below here when this is done. And you'll be able to actually click on the names of the stamps and just go straight to where they are if you want to buy one. I find that easier than just telling you the name. So let's see, I want this tree to be a little higher than him so it kind of fades into the background and overlaps. So we'll put it there again, So nice pressure. And again, because my stamps are not mounted, I do have that um, foam underneath, which is just that kids play foam. So if you're wondering why it's plain rubber, just repositionable tape to my block, that's why. All right, let's take that to the side. Now with this, I want to go ahead and add our address block. And again, same thing, I keep my mask for that. Although this one, the stickiness is gone, so let's put some more repositionable tape on there. And I want it to kind of look like it's coming from behind him. So let's line it up about here. Now I'm just going to use a plain micron. This is the number three. I just picked up whatever the first one was on my desk. And I'm going to go around this block. So starting at my mask for the Santa Claus. I'm just kind of drawing around it. And all the way till it meets up with him again. Okay. From there, I had Jingle Bells above on the other one, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. Again, with our same black ink. And I'm actually going to stamp all my black in this, so in case you wonder. And I have a cat climbing in the Christmas tree. I hear it moving. Okay. And the last. Well, one of the last pieces that are stamped in black are these wonderful triangles, which you can see me use all the time. So I want to stamp those. And then there's the stitches that go around our address block are actually going to be the very last thing we stamp after we even stamp the things in the other colors. 
And the reason is because I don't want to take that mask off until I color. You can stamp it whichever way you want, but then I take the mask off and then I have to put it back on. So that's up to you if you want to do it that way. And then I want this mm, here. One of the postage stamps. I usually don't always put the postage stamp in the corner. And for this, I'm actually going to put the postage stamp after the arrows are pointing to it. But that's up to you. If not, your postage stamp will cover one of these arrows. Alright, so we've got all of our base images stamped. Now we're going to lay down our color. Today I am using one of my favorites, Weathered Wood, which is Distress. So I'm just going to grab a makeup sponge or your distressing tool if you have um, sponges, whatever you want. And just kind of lay your color on. And around your tree, don't go into the tree because that is white snow. So you just kind of go a little rough around the tree. You can go in a little bit, but try not to go straight into the tree just because you're going to lose that snowy effect. This is a lighter color. It's like a blue-gray, so it won't really take away from it completely. Because, you know, snow and ice people think a light blue color anyway. But I'd just rather not. And I'm sorry if this is shaking the camera. <laughs> this envelope being so big, I'm trying to move it around so it stays on camera as I go. And this being bigger, this is one where I should have grabbed my distressing, or my, not my distressing tool, but my sponge tool. The handle does make it a little... I don't know if it's faster, but I guess easier than doing... I use the makeup sponges more for my detailed coloring, I guess I would say. But And now we're on these triangles. This is where I would use this. To get a little more detailed, I don't want to color into them. You can. And actually, I'm just going to show you. We're just going to do it the quick way, just to make this easier for you. If you don't feel like you have the time to go and worry about coloring over them, just color right over them because the markers I'm going to use to color that in will go right through it. Even though it's a pale color because when you're sponging the ink on, the color is not very dark to start with. So. Oh, and the cat just fell off the cat tree. Guys, I am sorry for all this noise today. They're still wound up. It's early in the morning. I think they drank some of my coffee. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. So we've got our base color down. Get this out of the way. Now I want to go ahead and stamp two different background stamps. So let me show you this again. You'll see here there's some music notes and then there's some of this writing. It's our ledger paper. So I just got my stamp. This is one of the reasons I like them unmounted. So I'm going to stamp a little bit of this with our weathered wood, the color we just used, and just kind of sporadically throw some of it on here. And I am stamping upside down, so if you wonder why I flipped it that way, just, I don't know. I have to have it towards me a little bit. So I've got a little bit here and there. Looks good. Now I want to take this awesome ledger and I'm going to go in with some Memento London Fog. So it has a little bit of a gray. I just, I don't know. I like the blue and the grays together. And I'm not trying really hard to stamp the street or any particular part of it. I'm just grabbing it and slapping parts of it down. The randomness, I think, is what makes this look so nice when it's done. I'm hoping I'm staying on camera for you guys, sorry. And then I want to go back with this um, music notes and add a little bit of them in the gray as well. And so I'm going to do along this corner here, get some notes in there, and you kind of fill in the, the empty spaces with a little bit extra. And maybe down here. And actually, I think I'm stamping the music notes upside down, so that tells you how detailed I get with them, right? Nobody's really going to notice unless they are paying super close attention. Okay, so we've got a nice base laid down here. Now we are going to put this ink away. Do our... I'm going to do our water splatters now while I have things masked off. So I've just got plain water and a spray bottle. I'm going to take, open it up, so you can do this on top of it. And then just like normal, add a couple flicks here and there. And if you oversaturate this, I do recommend opening the flap of your envelope if you're worried because you can potentially seal your envelope closed. 
Okay. So after a couple seconds, you'll see, let me hold this up the camera, it's already starting to wick that color away, which is why I used our water-based colors for my background. And so I'm going to pick up some of that so it dries quicker for the purpose of showing you guys this. You can also use a heat tool. Mine's really loud, so I'm not going to use it today. All right, now that we've done that, I'm going to remove this first mask, just this one. Get that repositionable adhesive off of there. And I'm going to pick up my stitching stamp here, which just fell off my block. Apparently it needs cleaned also. All right, so I've got the stitching stamp, and I want to kind of stitch this background label onto here. So I'm going back to my black ink, which is the archival. And I'm just going to kind of position that in here so that it stitches it in. Same thing, we're going to do that with the bottom as well. And I like to have the long part on the inside. That's up to you. You can do it any way that you'd like. I could have taken it on the outside where it goes through. And see how I stamped over top of this mask? I don't know if you guys can see that. That'll actually allow it to look like the stitching goes behind the image. All right. Now I want to dry this off, get any extra ink off of here. And I'm only going to do a partial of this stitching down here on the side. So I'm going to ink up just to this big section here. Get that to where I can do it. Okay, so I got a little extra ink. You can see that it's wet just past there, so I'm gonna take that off. Okay, and just take it, same thing. And there you go. If it doesn't stamp out quite well, like I didn't get all the ink off, just pick up that black marker again and just fix the little spots. And see this one I kind of didn't get the ink off, so we'll just, we'll fake that line. We'll just throw it right in there. All right, so now actually all your stamping part is done. Let's go ahead and remove these masks completely. And I realized with that actually that I missed a spot that should be blue here, so I'll just pick up my sponge again and throw a little blue in there because that's actually between him and the tree. Now this is when you get to play with your markers. And I have a variety today. So whatever you have, I recommend using, whether it's distress markers, and that's why if you're using distress markers, you would do the flicking of the water first. But you can use distress markers. I have a variety here. I have a Sharpie, a Prismacolor, a Copic, uh, two Copics, and a Spectrum Noir. So just use what you have. So I'm going to start with my red, which is the Sharpie. And this is a Sharpie brush tip. I like brush tip markers, so these I use a lot of times with my distress markers. These are alcohol based, so if you spend too much time, you can distort your stamping a little bit. So the detail on this may start to fuzz out. And that's okay. It doesn't bother me that much. And like I said, if it does, just use some um, memento ink. So I'm just going to color Santa's little outfit here. You don't have to be too detailed, just because your stamp underneath is going to pull the image together. It's The eye is going to look quickly at it and it's going to go, oh, that's Santa. All right, so we'll do that. And I want his bag to match, so actually let's do his bag too. And I am coloring this upside down, so please forgive me if this looks terrible and if my hand is in the way. I'm trying to keep it out. But you can see, this is super easy. It's nothing that takes a lot of time. You don't have to put a lot of thought into it. It just kind of comes together on its own. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and put his skin tone. So, And this is YR00, in case you are really concerned about the colors. I just picked up whatever. And I don't even think that's what color I used last time. So I just did his face and his lip. And then I'm going to go, oh, I did forget to do his hand though. So let's go back in and do Santa's hand. And let's do some of the baby doll faces down here. Okay. Now I'm going to grab some pink because you know Santa's got rosy cheeks. And this is RV13. So same thing, let's plop some pink in his cheeks. That's an extra rosy pink right there. And a little bit on his lip maybe. And maybe a dot in the dollies. Okay. 
now I've got this PB197, which is the Prismacolor. And I'm going to use the brush in. First, I'm going to use this on the tree. And I don't spend a lot of time. I just kind of go in and roughly put spots throughout the tree. I leave spots because I want it to look snowy. So the same thing, just kind of blot the color on. And let me bring that in so you guys can see this a little better. So if you can see there, the color's just kind of blotted on. I just kind of drop the brush down. I did not do this one on the original, but if you wanted to do that one, you would do the same. I want it to remain in the background, and that's the reason I'm not adding any color to it. But while we're at it, we're going to go up to our triangles here. And this is why I said it doesn't matter if you go over them with ink, because this color is a slightly darker color, and it will come in and color it up just fine. So same thing, just go ahead and color these. And you could color them any color you want, or you could leave them in the blue. I wanted them to pop out a little bit more, and it pulls the green from the tree over at the side. Let me pull this back out. Okay, there we go. It pulls the green from here over to here, so it makes the image kind of come together. I did realize I forgot brown, so let me grab it really quick. Oh, that is pink. Okay, for this one we're going to use a distress marker. Whatever I had close to my desk here, and it's vintage photo. Another favorite color. And I'm going to color in the stem of that tree, or the, I guess, yeah, the stem. The base of the tree. So, just a little bit of brown there. And if you want to add in some color to your Christmas bag down here, I just threw a little green in mine. Say, like, the baby's outfit down here for the baby doll can be green. Just toss some color in. And that also pulls the green throughout. The last thing I did... I took a pale gray. This one I've got the IG2 Spectrum Noir. And I just outlined the things that I want to kind of stand off of the white. So just go over Santa and his bag. And it helps it to really just kind of pop forward just that little extra bit more. The masking already does that. It separates everything when you color. But now when you go around him. It adds a hint of a shadow. You're not really trying to add a shadow. You don't have to be specific and say, oh, the light's coming from here or there. It literally just does that little extra. Your eye doesn't notice the color without looking for it, but your eye sees a lifted image. So I'm just going around basically him. And then I do the same with my address block because I want it to look lifted off the page. So I just go on the blue side of it. It's okay if you go into the white. It doesn't really matter. And so there we go. All right. So there you have it. That's really all there was to it. It's very easy. So I'll bring it up so you guys can see the parts in detail because again, this is a very large envelope. But you can see it doesn't take any extra effort, so if you have a specialty card that you want to send out or you're wanting to do even just this part on a regular envelope, you can. You can take this tree off of the envelope and make your envelope go. You can do your envelope long ways. There's a lot of ways you can go, especially for a card. Actually, this would make a really cute card for it. But I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry this is a little long today, but I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and... I hope to see you guys again. Thanks.